guys, it's Mary Taylor Day Today with Day 9 from Kingdom Blueprint. Do you really want the spirit of truth? Okay, this looks good. All right, through the spirit of truth, you are able to feel the presence of my Holy Spirit. He is the one who leads and guides you into all truth. He convicts you of sin. I know you are tempted to stray away from the truth at times, but my spirit will quicken you to see what you could not see before. Obey the instruction my spirit gives. He will give you on the true path of life. My spirit of truth reveals secrets and answers to every situation as you read my word and spend time in my presence. When you need an answer, pull out your sword of truth, my word, and ask the helper to show you the way. Here's our declaration. I proclaim the spirit of truth will rule in my life. I decree truth against lies, doubt, and unbelief. I will not be deceived. I give truth an established place of prominence in my thoughts, actions, and behaviors. I call forth revelations of your truth in my secret place with you. I command truth to be established in my life from the north, south, east, and west. I love that. Here's our prayer. Holy Spirit, I invite you to speak truth into my life. I want to know and grow in your truth with everything I do. I need your truth to permeate every area of my life. Help me to see deception from the enemy and from men. I desire to know your truth and to be able to rest your, test your truth against all things. You are the truth I need in my life. I love that. To encourage you guys with that, this is what I would say. We need to understand that we are humans. So being human means we're going to make mistakes. Our truth might not line up with God's truth. So we have to be able to stay in a place of humility at all times. Not where we think we have the right to judge someone or we have the right to say something or we, unless God is releasing us to say something. I am very careful about that. If God does not tell me to do a video, I won't do a video. If God doesn't tell me to release a word, I won't release a word. We need to be very aware that our flesh is going to constantly want to be in control. And so we have to be able to take heed and allow the spirit to be able to, um, we need to be able to submit to the spirit. Amen. And so in saying that every time I feel like I have the right to point the finger at my husband, I have the right to point the finger at somebody else. God will sit down with me and it's what's going on in your heart. What's that showing you? We need to be able to identify. We can have lens of fear, lens of doubt, lens of grief. We can have things and lenses and narratives in our own minds that could be blocking us from seeing God's truth in somebody's life. So we need to be very mindful. You know, whenever um, the Lord gives me a word about somebody, he didn't just give me words for people starting out. At first, he was giving me words about myself because I wasn't in a place to receive words for anybody else. It needed to be words for myself to help convict me and to help heal the pain and the lies that I had believed growing up. And so as I started believing the truth about who I am, and I started being able to speak what God says I am, who God says I am, and I wouldn't speak negative about myself, he could then trust me to give me words of knowledge and give me prophetic words for other people to release. But it takes time. It's a process. If out of our heart is stinking thinking, why would he want you to release that over somebody else's life? He doesn't, right? He wants to bring us in close, heal our hearts, help us to see that we're loved, we're accepted, we're forgiven, things we might need to repent for, things we said, things we did that were wrong, that we didn't know about because we had a blindfold on at the time. Blindfolds are a real thing. You know, I love understanding how good God is because we can have blindfolds on and not even know it until he allows us the process of showing us and that's an intimacy with him. And so every time I thought that I had the right to say this or the right to say that and he pulled me close, he'd show me that's a blindfold. That's something in your own heart that I'm showing by using that person to pull it out of you. That's a character developer. That's a grace grower. You're not receiving enough of my grace so you can't give what you haven't gotten from me. I need you to receive more grace or you have unforgiveness towards yourself. And so you're, you're reflecting that you're projecting that onto other people because they did something that you did years ago that you haven't forgiven yourself for. Right. And so it's being able to stay in that place of humility and gratitude and saying, thank you, God, that my ways are not your ways. And thank you, God, that you're sovereign and you're patient with me. 
And because, right, 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not easily angered, it is not self-seeking. It keeps no record of wrongs, but delights in the truth, not rejoices in evil, it delights in the truth, right? That song from Sunday school, man, I have it in my head, right? But it's the truth. And so we need to understand like God is love. So as he shows us these things, we need to be willing to pull back and have that heart of humility and say, oh, you know what, Lord, I do do that. I do say that. That is something I have a problem with. That is something I struggle with. You know what? I apologize. You know, thank you for convicting me. I love when God convicts me because the closer I get to conviction and correction, the closer I'm getting in intimacy with him, the the closer I'm getting healing and breakthrough in my own life to to serve him more, to be a, a hollow vessel for him. But in order to be used by him as a vessel, we have to become hollow. If there are blindfolds and um, lenses and false narratives and belief systems that we've come into agreement with that get in the way of being that vessel, God has to rid us of all those things before we can actually be used in, in his kingdom in that way to glorify him. Amen. So I hope that encourages you guys, you know, take time today and really think about it. You know, whenever you think, whenever I think that I have a right to feel some kind of way about somebody then God reminds me we don't war against flesh and blood. It's against principalities of evil and darkness. Love them, forgive them, release them, bless them. Ask me to bless them. Whoo, that's a good one. If you think that you don't struggle with unforgiveness towards someone, ask God to bless everybody in your life that's ever lied to you, betrayed you, disappointed you, cheated on you, hurt you. Yeah, see if you can do that. See if you can spend an hour pouring blessings out on them, asking God to bless them and love them and protect them. Who I couldn't for a while. And that's what helped me identify, oh, wow, I don't, I, I don't have forgiveness in my heart towards them. Okay, so if I can't forgive them, what do I need to forgive myself for? What do I need to receive forgiveness in my life for so I can give what I haven't received myself? Amen. So just to encourage you guys, that's where I would start because you got to be able to bless your enemies. Because we don't war against flesh and blood. It's principalities of evil and darkness. Amen. I hope this encourages you guys. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you for day 10. Bye.